What's up everybody, Matt Moran here for another weekly update. So uh, thank you guys for bearing with me last week when I didn't have a weekly update to post, but we have a nice long one to make up for this week. Lots of stuff to go over, of course, with two weeks worth of stories. I'm gonna get right into it. The first uh, vehicle that was revealed, uh, Pebble Beach uh, in Monterey is going on this week. So there's all kinds of exclusive and high-end stuff being revealed. Um, and the first is the Lamborghini Aventador SVJ. So I'm filming this on Thursday afternoon, but it's supposed to be revealed Thursday evening. So I'm gonna insert a little voiceover uh, with all the official specs and photos on the car. So I gotta say, it looks really good here. Uh, uh, you know, those little vents in the front kind of vent air through the front bumper over the hood, which is really cool. You have a spoiler in the back and uh, the rear diffuser. It looks very similar to what we saw in like the Centenario. Um, and so the V12 and the SVJ does 770 horsepower at 8,500 RPMs and then 530 pound-feet of torque, which is a nice little jump over the previous SV. And uh, anyway, it'll do 0 to 62 miles per hour in 2.8 seconds and top speed is over 200. 17 miles per hour, which is vague considering 2, 217 is the top speed of the regular Aventador. Um, but anyway, you know, the main thing is they say it handles really, really well, and they set the vehicle lap record at the Nurburgring with uh, a 6 minute 44.97 second uh, lap time there. Uh, other things, though, to help with that better handling, it has the ALA 2.0 system, which is the active aero. Um, so it's the next gen version of what was introduced on the Huracan Performante. And so that allows the SVJ to adjust between zero and max downforce in less than 500 milliseconds. Uh, and so you, it'll, with the middle part of the rear wing there, can split uh, downforce between, you know, one side and the other and everything. Very advanced with that tech there. And uh, so um, they're uh, going to be starting for the regular uh, SVJ, going to be starting at $517,770. Um, and they're only going to be making 900 of these but 63 of those are going to be part of this exclusive 63 edition, which is these ones with the graphics that say 63 on them. Um, and that pays homage to uh, 1963, which is the year uh, when Lamborghini was founded. And um, so I think it's just a graphics package. I don't think there's anything more exclusive, maybe a little more carbon fiber there, which I'm sure you could add on to a regular SVJ too. But anyway, if you want that exclusive one, they're making 63 of those. Um, and then the rest of that 900 run are for the regular SVJ. And they said they're going to be starting deliveries in the first part of next year as well. So uh, pretty quick rollout. And uh, yeah, so pretty cool to see that. Another vehicle that was revealed at Pebble Beach was the 2019 BMW Z4 M40i, which is uh, the first edition uh, that they're revealing here of the new Z4. We finally see what it looks like though. Uh, unfortunately, it sounds like the Supra still won't be revealed till next year, even though they're basically the same vehicle. You know, this is just the convertible version uh, in a lot of ways. And so anyway, uh, I love the design of it personally. I think it looks really good there with a wide grill. Lots of people saying it looks like a Fiat 120 Lots of people saying it looks like a Kia Stinger GT. I can kind of maybe see the Stinger GT a little bit in the grill, but the headlights are totally different. Um, you know, it, I don't know. But anyway, I personally think it looks fantastic. I love the angles. Um, you know, all the body panels are very angular and just, it's very complex, but very beautiful looking at the same time. Uh, the back end with those slim taillights looks really good. I'm actually really digging the new Z4 here. It uh, also even has that little duck tail that's integrated into the rear trunk there and looks really really nice um anyway this first edition gets this frozen orange metallic paint bmw still hasn't revealed any official numbers for this for some reason i think they're saving the full reveal until the paris motor show or something because um, they're saying i think uh, mid-september mid september 18th is when we'll get all the official numbers uh, but there's i think it's been confirmed the european version is gonna get th 335 horsepower in this top trim um but that could be more here in the states since we have less strict emission stuff now um um, so I don't know, but you know, we know it's going to be a three liter uh, inline six turbo uh, engine and it's going to have uh, somewhere probably between 340 and 382 horsepower or what the uh, rumors are ranging between currently. Um, it also should go zero to 60. Some people are saying under four seconds. Others are reporting 4.4 seconds. So again, we'll have to see what the final number is there. Um, other performance stuff though about this first edition is that uh, it gets an M tuned sports suspension, M sport rear differential and M Sport brakes. The interior, as you can see, is similar to the 8 Series, just kind of shrunken down a little bit. It has the same digital gauges, though. Same kind of infotainment and all that stuff, of course. Um, and so, anyway, interestingly, the uh, 
this version isn't going to be the first version available. The 30i version is actually going to be arriving at dealerships next spring. And then this M40i is coming a couple of months later. They said the second quarter of next year. But either way, very cool to see that. While we're on the topic of Pebble Beach, though, here, a couple other uh, things that were shown off. Um, there's going to be a few over the course of the weekend later on this weekend from Bugatti and others. Um, but first, uh, Infinity has shown their Prototype 10. So last year they had the Prototype 9, very retro looking. This one uh, is similar, you know, like a little, looks a little more futuristic, though, with the headlights and stuff. Um, and anyway, um, it's got an EV powertrain that they say, you know, is like completely flat. And that's the only part that really will translate to a production vehicle otherwise this is just a nice looking um thing to show at pebble beach to be like hey we're infinity don't forget about us and that's about it i think because i mean it's cool to see the ev powertrain but this doesn't give us any hints about any future products or anything like that like a normal concept car would um but anyway cool to see that nonetheless rolls royce has shown a production vehicle and it is the silver ghost collection version of the rolls royce ghost and so they're only making 35 of these um and they pay homage to the original Silver Ghost from 1907, um, and so there's all kinds of like, all kinds of special little uh, things all around the vehicle to make it unique. Um, but the silver paint actually has real silver particles in it, uh, so that's uh, uh, definitely a little more uh, blingy. Also, uh, you can see the Spirit of Ecstasy is actually solid silver. Um, it has some new chrome wheels that have you know these um, 1907 thing on them, and there's a few other special little touches uh, throughout the vehicle as well. And uh, yeah, they only make only making 35 of them. They didn't say how much they're going to cost, but I'm sure, you know, it's one of those things they're already sold out, so who cares? Um, but back to normal stuff and, uh, you know, stuff that we can all actually afford. Um, there's lots of spy pictures this past week. Tons of them, I guess, in the past two weeks. The first, though, is the 2020 Ford Explorer uh, was spied without any real camouflage on it. We can totally see the front end now very clearly. You know, it's just, it's really cool. Obviously, this is the police trim, um, so it's a little more basic, of course, with the wheels and stuff, but otherwise, looks great. I like. I think that front end looks really cool. Uh, it's a new front end. We'll have to all memorize very well to you know check out in our rearview mirrors. You know whenever uh, we're doing a, a little bit over the speed limit and whatnot. Um, and so anyway, I think it's. I really like the the way the grill though, and the way the headlights and uh, you know the front bumper kind of cuts into the grill and stuff looks really good. I think out back it's definitely more evolutionary. You know, just a slightly different take on the uh, current Explorer taillights. And there's going to be all kinds of other interesting things you can see the way the windows are cut out there towards the rear and stuff is a little different and kind of cool looking and um yeah so i'm guessing this is gonna be revealed sometime uh, probably towards the end of this year or maybe early next at detroit or something like that um makes sense um anyway cool to see that other Ford SUV news that's not so great uh, is there was an auto conference uh, pa this past week where a Ford executive revealed that the baby Bronco um, that we just saw a teaser picture of, you know, a few months ago, they're saying that's going to share a platform with the Focus Active. Um, and so that means it'll be a front wheel drive based, probably all wheel drive um, little crossover, not a real, you know, like full on SUV, I guess. So think of this more as like a Jeep Renegade competitor, not a Jeep Wrangler competitor. Um, and so a little unfortunate there. We know the Bronco will, I believe, be Ranger based. And so that will be an actual truck type SUV that should have some decent off-road credentials and whatnot. But this sounds like this um, little baby Bronco is probably going to be more of just a car based cross crossover um, but again with how well the Jeep Renegade and Compass and stuff sell you know it's uh, not super surprising to hear this um we know it's going to be, it's still rumored to be called either the Maverick or the Timberline or the two things that have been uh, copyright, copywritten and, you know, kind of been kicked around. And anyway, this is going to be revealed supposedly next year as a 2020 model. So cool to see that. And Ford was also spy testing the next-gen Focus ST, which again is more bad news for us here in America since we won't be getting it anymore. Since Ford announced they're getting rid of all cars except for the Mustang and the Focus Active and giving us only SUVs and trucks besides that. And anyway, so uh, hopefully they change their mind because this ST looks really cool. I mean, this one, you know, you can see uh, it looks like it could have uh, the headlights need a little bit more polishing, I think, like the production version. But otherwise, I mean, it even has ST badges on it. And obviously the mismatched body panel colors uh, throw you off a little bit. But, um, you know, it looks pretty good. A really nice evolution of the ST uh, focus there. And so anyway, uh, for those of you that will be getting this, I think it, you know, it looks like it's pretty basically ready to go. So I'm guessing uh, there should be a reveal relatively soon 
soon. Um, again, Paris uh, is possible or just online sometime. Uh, another Ford story here. The 2020 Shelby DT500 was spied for the millionth time again. <laughs> it's like every week it seems someone sending me pictures of these cars running around all over the country. Um, spy photographers are getting new snapshots just about every day and none of them really ever seem to show anything new. That's why I don't really talk about it every single week. Um, but this one is a little different. You know, so you see it has the track pack style spoiler like the GT350. It looks straight off of the GT350. And this one supposedly was doing some testing at uh, VIR, uh, that racetrack in Virginia. And so that's why it's got that roll cage. I don't think it's going to be an option uh, for regular GT500s. Um, but yeah, so I don't know when this is coming, though. It's almost one of those cases of uh, too little, too late, in my opinion. You know, while Hellcats and ZL1s have been running around for years now, uh, we're still seeing camouflage GT500s. But uh, there is a new document from Mustang 6G this week that gives us a little more uh, to chew on, and that is um, so a poster there posted about um, a leaked spec sheet document which shows supposedly, again, according to the Justice document, 720 horsepower, 650 pound-feet of torque. By the way, that 720 horsepower supposedly is made at 7,500 RPMs. Uh, it's a cross-plane crank version of the Voodoo, supposedly, with a supercharger, you know, 5.2. Um, but the document says it's going to weigh 4,220 pounds which sounds really hard to believe considering a gt350 is like 400 pounds or so lighter than that um and i mean it would still be lighter than a hellcat by but not by much i think hellcat's around 4400 pounds so this is only 175 pounds lighter if this is true um and that also puts it i think the zl1 camaro is like only 3850 or something or maybe 3900 so this is like 300 pounds at least heavier than a zl1 makes it hard to compete whenever you're that much heavier. Um, so we'll have to see again if, if this is even true, all these numbers, but if so, you know, again, I, I really want to be optimistic for the GT500, but like the more time that goes by, the more <laughs> pessimistic I get. But again, we'll save judgment until the final thing. Um, the last little thing about this GT500 though is it also says on the spec sheet, top speed is only 190, which means it's actually going to be slower than the previous gen GT500, which actually was able to go, I think, 203 or something. Anyway, not important, but uh, yeah, just we'll have to keep our fingers crossed that GT500 ends up, you know, being better than all the speculation is suggesting. Also, Ford officially revealed the 2018 Cobra Jet Mustang this past week, um, which is a non-street legal drag car. So this isn't anything that you can drive on the streets, of course. Um, and they're only making 68 of them. They're 130 grand each. It's completely prepped for drag racing. Has the uh, solid beam rear axle there in the back, you know, so there isn't any kind of rear independent independent rear suspension or anything so definitely just a drag car um, but sadly since I'm making 68 of them I'm sure that very few people will ever actually take these down a drag strip um, which is unfortunate but anyway it doesn't even say how much horsepower it's making Ford didn't say that they just say it's got a bored out version of the Coyote 5. it's 5.2 liters though from this Coyote but it's not the Voodoo motor uh, it also has a 3 liter Whipple supercharger on top of that um, and Ford did claim though one number is that it's going to do a mid 8 second quarter mile supposedly at 150 mile per hour or more, which is uh, cool to see, but uh, it's a shame they're so limited. Ford also announced pricing this week for the Ranger. Um, and so the Ranger is coming, I think, by the end of this year is kind of what I've been hearing. Um, but anyway, the starting price for these is officially going to be $25,395. And um, that makes it the most expensive midsize truck in the segment. Um, but that's partially because it comes with the 2.3 liter EcoBoost motor, which is probably, they didn't announce horsepower, but will probably put out a, you know, a similar amount of power to the competition's V6 offerings. So when you compare it to the V6 versions of all the competition, then um, it's right in line with the rest. It actually undercuts the Canyon and Tacoma and even the Frontier V6s, um, but it is still a little bit more expensive um, than I believe the Chevy and uh, one or two others. So, um, you know, kind of right in the middle of the pack there. And uh, the only problem I have with this Ranger is it seems like it's still just a little too expensive and just a little too big because an F-150 starts at only $2,500 more roughly. So, you know, whenever with everyone financing, you know, for, you know, huge amounts of money these days and, you know, 2,500 bucks isn't a whole lot more money to have a bigger, 
you know, a nicer probably F-150. Uh, you know, it just seems a little little bit of a toss-up there as to why people would go for the Ranger aside from just wanting a smaller size truck. But, you know, with a lot of truck buyers, bigger is better. So, again, um, the F-150 seems like it definitely uh, won't be uh, cannibalizing any sales, you know, uh, with this Ranger. I think the F-150 is safe um, as being the top dog here. But we'll see how this Ranger ends up doing. Should still do pretty well, I'm sure. Um, at other truck news, though, is Dodge was by testing the TRX or T-Rex prototype for the new Ram 1500. And um, so the spy photographer, I mean, it just looks like a normal uh, Longhorn Ram that's got, you know, a little bit of a lift and some, you know, knobby tires on it. But um, the spy photographer said it was definitely making a supercharger whine when it was trying to get away from him. So that means it's getting the Hellcat motor. And so that means it's probably going to have at least 707 horsepower in a Ram, which to me is the nicest truck in the segment currently. And then you give it 707 horsepower, blows the Raptor out of the water, um, and, you know, all that type of stuff, the Colorado ZR2, all those. And uh, that is shaping up to be the coolest truck on the market uh, whenever it finally debuts. Um, this still looks fairly early on since this isn't, it doesn't have any kind of aggressive body work, so who knows what the actual... Uh, you know, T-Rex version is going to look like. Um, so that means this is probably still fairly early on and it's, uh, you know, testing and stuff. So I don't know, maybe it'll be available, you know, next year could be the year after and actually, you know, debut, uh, 2020. We'll have to wait and see, but it'll be worth the wait whenever it comes. Cause that is going to be a sweet truck. If it's got the Hellcat motor in it. Um, another interesting thing. So a pair of C7 Corvettes was spy testing, um, by a viewer in South Carolina this past week. And, um, it's hard to tell anything. The pictures aren't super high res. Um, and you know, it's kind of hard to see, but it just, the fact that there's C sevens running around in camouflage is an interesting thing to note because there's been rumors saying that the C seven is going to continue to be sold alongside the C eight well into the early 2020s. So that if that ends up being the case, then this certainly uh, gives legitimacy to those rumors. You know, the fact that there's a C seven, otherwise the C seven, I mean, it's dead and over with. So, you know, there's no reason to be putting uh, test mules out there if they're not doing anything with it. So this means, you know, it's testing something new. It could be a new transmission, could be a new engine, um, or just some other changes. You know, again, I just got that one shot of the back. They're so hard to tell if there's any kind of tweaks to the styling really or anything. Um, but still just interesting to, to see, I guess, um, the, the plate, whenever the person that took the pictures said, um, it said something about testing and, and, uh, research and development, I think on it. So we'll have to see, you know, what ends up happening there with the C7, but does seem to give some legis- legitimacy to those rumors about the C7 sticking around alongside the C8. So anyway, huge thanks to the viewer for sending in those pictures. Uh, next is the 2020 Genesis G80 was officially, uh, spied here this past week, uh, by Brian Williams, my spy photographer here. And so it looks uh, pretty interesting, totally different than the current G80, which means this is most likely a completely ground up new vehicle. Um, and it looks like it has a similar shape and styling to the Kia K900, but even a little smaller and swoopier than that, I think. Um, so you can see it's got that massive grill and uh, totally different headlights, um, up front there. And, uh, this looks really good. Although I will say that front arrangement with the way those grills are cut out and the headlights looks very similar to the front bumper on the new Bentley Continental GT with a large middle grill. And then the uh, kind of grills that go out towards the sides. They're all kind of blending together. Um, although this obviously has the more, uh, squarish headlights instead of, um, you know, circular headlights on, like on the Bentley. But I think that's kind of where this design is headed just based off what I'm seeing from the spy shots. Um, so, you know, I think that uh, you're definitely going to make it look very attractive for sure. Um, the sides and back all look way lower in every way too. I mean, the door handles are super low on the doors there. Um, you can see in the back, the trunk lid and everything looks very low, um, you know, almost unnaturally so. It's really cra- kind of going to be an extreme look, I think, in many ways. It looks very interesting though. I'm curious to see what what's hiding behind that camouflage there. It looks like some slender tail lamps in the back. Could be quite a looker. Uh, I'm excited to see that, you know, once the camera is peeled off. Um, some official Hyundai news uh, this week, though, they did reveal the 2019 Elantra. Um, and interestingly, it looks completely different, but this is just a refresh. It's just a heavy refresh. Um, they basically gave it a completely new front end, completely new back end. The sides are the only part that's kind of a carryover, and that kind of stands out a little bit to me. It kind of um, doesn't blend in as well with the front and the back. It's not quite as angular and sharp as the front and the back. It's a little more curvy like the previous uh, Elantra, the current car. Um, 
But I really think it looks sharp, though, especially up front there. I mean, you have the headlights that are very triangular. Everything's very triangular on these uh, new launchers here. But that headlight chrome kind of links up nicely with the top of the grille there, similar to what you see on the new Volkswagens, which I personally think is a really cool uh, treatment there. Um, other things, though, the back end gets uh, this uh, new trunk lid, and they took the... Uh, license plate holder from the trunk area to now down by the rear bumper there um, and you can see it's similar to, to the uh, Sonata there as far as the trunk arrangement and stuff goes. I have those zigzag uh, LED elements in the taillights which are also a very nice improvement in my opinion and looks really good. Um, inside is where you can see that it's pretty similar to the old Elantra. That's where it kind of shows that it's just a refresh not a totally new vehicle um, but it does now get a 5 inch touchscreen as standard and that includes a standard backup camera since that's federally mandated um, even though it's marketed as a new standard feature. Um, also gets some new knobs that look a little more uh, metal. I'm not sure if they'll be real metal or not, but look met like metal there, uh, which is cool. It also has a Qi wireless charging pad available. Um, it has the same engines as before, and the Elantra Sport, there's, Hyundai says, is staying the same for now, but um, later on this year, it will be adopting this new styling as well and get the sport treatment, which should look even better. Um, anyway, these uh, regular launchers are going to be on sale in the fall, but no pricing has been announced for them yet. Other Hyundai news, though, is they officially confirmed the Hyundai Kona Electric will, in fact, get 258 miles of range on the EPA testing cycle, which is impressive. Um, that means it's 20 more miles than the Bolt puts it right up there with uh, above the uh, short range Model 3, although the Tesla Model 3 with the bigger battery um, is I think 300 and some 310 miles, but that is also way more expensive if you can get your hands on one. And again, they're still a little iffy with their quality. I think this past week, someone just picked up a new Model 3 and we're driving in the rain and the bumper fell off of it. Um, so that's all I have to say about Tesla for right now. Uh, it still seems a little shaky there. So this seems uh, definitely to be a little more of a sure bet here. And uh, anyway, they're saying that these Kona Electrics are going to be on sale in California and a few other states before the end of the year. Um, and the rest will be added early next year. So cool to see that. And we have some sad news uh, this week from Audi, who confirmed that they're going to be dropping the manual option for the 2019 A4 and A5. So um, they said the reason is that 5% of buyers uh, for the A4 and A5 took the manual. Only 5%. And they said it just wasn't worth um, you know, bringing over if no one's buying it. So I'm, I'm hoping those manual buyers just go and buy like the new Genesis G70 with the manual or, you know, the BMW and Cadillac offerings, they have manuals still in their sports sedans. Um, but that's just, it's really unfortunate. Um, so Audi officially does not offer a car in the United States anymore with a manual transmission. So the death of the manual continues in some ways, but like I said, we have stuff like the G70 popping up to take its place, and hopefully that results in sales for those companies that are bold enough to, to keep on with it. Uh, but it is really sad. You know, I was just in the United Kingdom this past week, and there are so many manuals. Manuals are everywhere. Most people have manual transmissions, really. And it's, you know, I think it definitely is still, it's fun. It makes sense. You know, if people buy it, it's just... Uh, people are just not buying them here in the States for some reason. And it shows, you know, like the United Kingdom, there's manual options for everything because people buy it. If people bought them here, it would they would offer it. You know, and that's what BMW said, uh, you know, two weeks ago when I did that weekly update. They said, we'll keep offering manuals as long as people buy them. And, um, you know, stuff like the Mustang continues with a manual because over 50% of Mustang buyers get the manual. So it just comes down to what people are buying. Apparently, Audi buyers are not fans of manuals, sadly. So um, it's just the way it goes. Um, Volkswagen Group, though, did have some good news this week. Um, they're making uh, their Spectrum colors available for the 2019 Golf R. So Spectrum is something they've had in Canada and I think Europe for a while now. And so it's basically an additional 40 colors you can choose from. It's $2,500 extra on top of a normal Golf R. Um, but, uh, yeah, you get the, all those different choices, which is really really cool um, and so lots of really exciting colors in there as well but it still is 2500 bucks and I wonder if just wrapping a car would either be cheaper whether it's just for the short term or long term because if you buy a bright orange Golf R how many other people are going to want that and the resale value might be lower so again really cool they're offering it We'll have to see how many people actually take them up on it, though. And Aston Martin had some cool news this week, and that is they announced they announced they're going to be making 28 reproduction Aston Martin DB5s uh, from the James Bond movie Goldfinger. 
uh, which this is just really awesome. This is one of those uh, cases where I'm really happy there's a ton of super rich people out there to, uh, you know, I guess convince Aston Martin and other companies to make awesome stuff like this. So uh, Aston Martin, is, is, they say it's going to have functioning gadgets as well, such as revolving number plates and more. And that's all they committed to is the revolving number plates. But um, the movie cars had bulletproof uh, shields there in the back. It had machine guns in the front, extending bumpers to ram people both in the front and in the back, an oil sprayer in the back, an ejector seat, and tire cutters in the extendable wheel hubs there. Uh, it also had a GPS system in the middle of the dashboard there, which uh, almost seems like the people that made Goldfinger had a crystal ball to look 50 years into the future and see that. Um, and uh, it even has a car phone, which again, a very forward-thinking thing that uh, is interesting. Uh, so anyway, none of them are going to be street legal, these reproductions, unfortunately. I'm not sure if that's because of the gadgets. Uh, the revolving number plate, I could see you know being objectionable, of course, if you're running away from the cops and you actually can change your, your uh, license plate numbers there. But I don't know. Uh, it's just... Uh, I'm, we'll have to see what other stuff they add into it. So um, they did, you know, I think things like the guns definitely aren't going to be on it unless they're dummies, but even that can get dicey, you know, because yeah, how do you make it very clear these are fake guns? Um, but anyway, the guy working on the gadgets for these vehicles is going to be Chris Corbold, who uh, was the special effects supervisor for all the recent Bond films, as well as the Christopher Nolan Batman uh, movies. And I actually got to see him in action whenever I, uh, those of you that have been following the channel for a long long time back in like 2010 or 2011 whenever they filmed the dark knight rises in pittsburgh i went downtown every day for about a month and filmed behind the scenes footage um and you can go watch that playlist of all that stuff if you want but he was there with the tumblers and you know making them jump and you know the bat pod making it you know drive around with catwoman on the bat on the back of it and stuff um i got to see him do all that stuff a very very cool guy it seems and so him working on this gives me confidence these are going to be really well done these uh reproductions here and uh, they should be really well done because they're going to be costing $3,510,000 each. And so, uh, yeah, 25 of them will be sold to customers. Aston Martin is keeping one for themselves. They're giving one to Eon Productions, which is the uh, production company that produces the Bond movies. And, of course, it's going to be used for promotional purposes, I'm sure. Um, and then they're auctioning one for charity. Uh, and uh, so, yeah, really, really awesome. Even if it isn't street legal, that is going to be so cool. Um, and definitely adding that one to my lottery win wish list, I guess. Um, anyway, uh, more spy shots here. Like, I said tons of spy pictures this week. Mercedes was spied testing a Roadster version of the AMG GTR this past week on the Nurburgring. And um, so this, uh, you know, it's pretty predictable that they would do this. It's, again, the same exact thing as the normal GTR, just the convertible top. Um, and it should be arriving before the end of the year because of how simple it is with the transition here. Um, it also was, uh, there was also another GT uh, that was spied, AMG GT, that was spied with a mild facelift. Um, and um, it's mostly just new headlights, which you can see there if you you look closely it ditches the projectors in the headlights there and you just have the uh, little square led elements instead um looks a little more futuristic though definitely a nice little improvement for a refresh and um it also seems to be getting uh the sportier gtc's rear bumper and it's got a spoiler on this one we'll have to see how much of that actually you know transitions over to the base model here but i'm sure all the versions will get these new headlights eventually um it's also likely to get some digital gauges on the cockpit to kind of bring it up to speed with all the other modern Mercedes stuff. And uh, anyway, that's probably coming next year as well. So cool to see those. Mercedes was also spied testing the GLB this past week. And this time it doesn't have any heavy camo. Recently, in the past few months, we've seen it with all these heavy bags all over it. And you can't see anything. But now it's just a wrap, um, which is a little disappointing because it appears that uh, it won't have round headlamps. There was a lot of talk this is going to be like a baby G-Wagon. And that would have made a lot of sense with how much people love round anglers and stuff if they could actually jump up to um a, you know what looks like a baby g-wagon that's a lot more affordable than the regular g-wagon i think that would have sold so well but instead it seems like mercedes took the easy route and just you know plastered on some c-class headlamps there um which definitely on this one are not um the the production headlights i don't think because they look very unfinished or it's the base model i mean 
there are just basic halogen things there. Um, but just really, I, I don't know, with those headlights, it really kind of kills it for me. Otherwise, you know, it's boxy, looks kind of like the old GLK, um, and, you know, it looks cool. You know, the back end looks like it's going to have some nice taillights and stuff. Just, I think they dropped the ball with putting, you know, the corporate Mercedes face on it. They should have done something unique with this, and they didn't. So now um, it's just going to be a slightly boxier version of the GLC, basically. Um, you know, a little bigger than the GLA, of course. That's why it's called the GLB. Um, it's also going to be on the same platform as the GLA, though, um, which means it's only getting t probably turbocharged four-cylinder engines, and it'll be front-wheel drive based, and you'll have all-wheel drive as an option. Um, and it means it's also going to, it's going to get the dual-clutch auto, which isn't nearly as smooth as the full-on automatic that you get in the GLC and stuff. Um, anyway, it'll probably be cheaper than the GLC, so I guess that's going to be the advantage there since you have the more economy car-based underpinnings of it. Uh, but still, seems like the GLC is going to be the better option if you want an actual, you know, good handling SUV. Um, anyway, interesting to see that. BMW was spied testing the 8 Series Grand Coupe this past week, which looks exactly like the two-door, except it has two extra doors. <laughs> and that's basically it. Otherwise, it, I mean, it's very swoopy looking, looks just like the normal one, which, I mean, isn't a surprise because the uh, old 6 Series Grand Coupe is the same way. The one thing that does seem different from the 6 Series Grand Coupe, though, is that uh, the rear windows on the 8 Series version here look like they're a lot taller, um, which means you'll hopefully have less of a sloping roof line there and uh, have better headroom, which then kind of makes it just look like a cooler, sportier 7 Series as far as, you know, size goes and stuff. Um, but, you know, I'm sure that'll help to have the better headroom there in the back. Um, otherwise, there shouldn't be any kind of surprises. It'll have probably an identical interior to the regular 8 Series um, and should be coming fairly soon since it seems like it's such a simple, uh, you know, switch over again. All the other main parts are already done it's just adding two more doors and you know obviously um they built the regular 8 series with this one in mind i'm sure so anyway cool to see that audi was spy testing the rs q3 and this is the first time we've seen it without any kind of coverings over the headlights and taillights since the regular q3 was finally revealed they can kind of show that stuff while they're testing now and it uh, looks pretty good, I gotta say. For a little SUV, that's gonna be uh, pretty interesting. And that'll be the one, compared to the GLB, I think this will be the one uh, to get as far as the sporty SUVs go if you want something like this. Because the rumor is saying, supposedly, that this is going to be getting um, the RS3's 2.5 liter 5 cylinder turbo engine. That glorious sounding engine. So if you have that, but you have a little more space than you have in the RS3, um, and a little more practicality, since we don't get the hatch version of the RS3 here. This sounds like it would actually be a crossover that would be kind of cool um, and be something I'd even be interested in personally. That's really sweet, especially if it has 400 horsepower like the RS3 does. That is a really cool combo. Um, and so we'll have to see if it, it does in fact have that engine in it. I really hope so. Um, but it looks pretty far along, so hopefully there won't be too long to wait to see this, although um, we haven't even seen the regular SQ3 yet, so it'll be a little bit of a wait until we see the RS version, I'm sure, just to you know, keep the high hierarchy in, in place there. Uh, but anyway, interesting to see that. Speaking of compact crossovers though, GM was by testing three this week. Uh, so the first stop here is the 2020 Chevy Trax, um, which looks like it's gonna be getting clear inspiration from the new Blazer. I mean, the headlights and stuff, it's the same exact kind of configuration there, which again, kind of harkens back to the Jeep Cherokees, uh, you know, that everyone's doing that split arrangement, Hyundai, everybody, I mean, it's like they're all doing the same exact front end. Um, but you know, the Blazer definitely looks a little more aggressive and I think that's gonna translate nicely to the uh, Trax here. This looks like this new, next generation tracks is going to be a little bit wider a little bit uh, flatter there for the front end there a little sharper um, which is cool also there was a buick encore version that was spied um, which appears to still have prototype headlights are so not quite as uh, nice looking yet but you know that, that'll certainly be improved it also looks a little more upscale judging by the wheels there um, which have a little more bling on them and the chrome wings and the grill which is the dead giveaway this is the buick version um, but both definitely seem wider and more angular but the buick version does seem like it has a little more of a curvature to the front end of it there versus the more flatter front end of the tracks. Um, and then separately, uh, what we think is the GMC version of these compact crossovers is possibly coming, um, which uh, is interesting because there's always a debate about whether GMC should have a version of this, but it seems like they're giving into it because this is a completely different look than the other two, um, and that's really all that's left, unless it's a Cadillac. Um, but I, it, 
doesn't have the Cadillac girl and stuff. So I'm pretty sure this is a GMC. It's rumored to be called the Granite. Um, and um, yeah, it could possibly be a little more rugged looking than the Buick, um, but nicer than the Trax. You know, so those who want a nicer interior, but they don't want the, you know, luxurious Buick can go for the GMC instead and still get that rugged look with a nicer interior. Um, and so anyway, it seems like all these are, you know, still, uh, you know, a little further back in development. So probably not going to be coming out super soon. Um, but both should arrive, you know, I'm guessing at some point next year to be maybe 2020 or 2021 model year vehicles. Um, so anyway, cool to see that. Um, for some official Chevy news real quick, um, there's a new Premier Plus trim now available for the 2019 Tahoe and Suburban, um, which gives you the 420 horsepower V8 um, from the RST version, but without the, you know, sportier blacked out appearance of the RST. And instead, um, you have the traditional chrome accents and you just get that more powerful engine and a nicer interior. There's mentions of mahogany and uh, you know, just a nicer trimmed interior giving you know, its premium plus um, trim designation. And anyway, these are going to be available as soon as next month. I think production starts here in the next couple of weeks. So um, anyway, interesting to see that. And the last news here is Honda has uh, revealed a light refresh for the Civic for the 2019 model year. And uh, as you can see here, it's got just lightly revised front bumpers that make that lower portion appear more open there. And it's a nice little change without, you know, changing it or ruining the already good looking Civic. Um, it now has standard uh, black trim for the grill there instead of chrome too, which is a notable change. I think, again, the chrome was kind of a little bit more divisive. So I think this is uh, going to make people a little happier there with a the blacked out trim. There's also a new sport trim now available for the coupe and the sedan version um, but it's not as cool as the um, sport hatchback so um, the sport here in the sedan and coupe um, you still get the regular two liter naturally aspirated four cylinder you don't get the 1.5 liter unfortunately it is available with a manual or the cvt um, but yeah it would be nice if they were able to give it that motor but i get it's it's a little too close to the si for comfort i guess um, also it gets the center exhaust like the si on these new sport trims um, and all the Civics also get an updated infotainment system that I believe now comes standard as a touchscreen, but I'm not totally sure on that. They didn't show any pictures of the interior, um, but they did say that it's getting the new infotainment system, which means it gets a volume knob again. <laughs> so um, that's one thing you know the current Civics don't have, and you know it's, a, it's definitely a sore spot for most. So that's great to see they're giving the volume knob back. Um, they also all get standard Honda Sensing now for 2019, which is cool. Um, and they haven't announced any kind of pricing or availability yet for that, but I'm sure it'll be available relatively soon and you know shouldn't be too much of a departure in price but yes yeah, so that's it for all the news this week guys so let me know your thoughts and everything in the comments below thank you guys very much for watching and i'll see you next week take care